Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the third of the four thermodynamic potentials. And in this case, we're dealing with Helmholtz free energy. So what is it? Well, from the equation, we can see and notice that we either use the letter F or the letter A to denote Helmholtz free energy. And it says that it's the internal energy minus TS. Wow, what does that mean? Well, we now know what the internal energy is. That's the internal energy of the system. It's due to the kinetic and potential energy of the individual atoms and molecules within the system. But what is T and S? Well, T stands for temperature and S stands for entropy. Now, without, without going into too much detail of what entropy is, the equation for the change in entropy is equal to the heat added or subtracted. And I put the little delta symbol in front of Q to make it, a little, make it a little bit more sensible. We don't need to write it because Q simply represents the amount of heat added or subtracted or taken away from the system. But here we can see that the change in internal, uh, no, the change in entropy is equal to the ratio of how much heat was exchanged divided by the temperature at which this happens. Now, with the Helmholtz free energy, we're going to keep the temperature of the environment the same. It's going to be a constant. So here we can see then that we can write Q as simply the product of entropy times T. What that really means is that S times T really represents an exchange of heat, either from the system, from the, from the environment to the system, or from the system to the environment. So even though it seems kind of mysterious, this could really be written as such. We could say F equals U minus Q. And we know what Q means. Q means heat. So therefore, it's not as complicated, not mysterious. It simply means that we take all the available internal energy and subtract from that Q. And what does that Q represent? Well, let's come over here to the diagram. So here we have a system that's enveloped by an environment. And the environment is kept at a constant temperature T. And to change the system, we can put some work into the system. When we do work onto the system, it adds energy to the system, internal energy. But not all of the internal energy of the system can come from doing work on it. Some of it can be absorbed from the environment at temperature T. And so that absorption of energy from the environment into the system, we can call it Q. When Q is positive, we add heat to the system, and it's a product of the entropy times the temperature. Even if you don't understand why or why that's there, that's fine. Simply think of it as heat added to the system as well as work done on the system together adds to the internal energy of the system. Now, when the system wants to release that energy to do work, well, not all of it will be available to do work only some of it. So whatever the internal energy is, minus whatever energy goes back into the environment. Again, that's that Q or the ST of that equation. When the system tries to do work, not all of it is available. And that's the key to the Helmholtz free energy. When the system does work, not all of the internal energy is available. Some of it is lost to the environment. And so we can say that Q here represents the heat obtained from the environment, and of course, it also represents the heat returned back to the environment. And therefore, we can write that the Helmholtz free energy is the maximum amount of work a system is able to perform during a thermodynamic process at a constant or with a constant temperature T. In other words, take the internal energy of the system, subtract from it what's going to be lost to the environment, and that's the maximum you can get out of that system. And that's what we mean by the Helmholtz free energy. Now, what do we use it for? Well, it's used in calculations to determine how much energy is available. It's a good thing to know because when we have some sort of reaction or a process, not all of the available energy is really available to do work. Some of it is going to be lost to the environment. And it would be good to know how much of it will be used for work and how much of it will be lost to the environment. And we can use uh, some examples here when we have an explosive reaction, how much of the explosion is actually done to do work and how much of the explosion is actually lost to the environment. So that's, that's an example. Or in medical imaging, not all of the energy of the machine will go into what you're trying to do, the imaging. Some of it will be lost to the environment around it. 
and it's good to know the proportion of it that's actually going to be available. And that's called the Helmholtz free energy. It's the internal energy of the system minus whatever is lost to the environment. And that is how it's done.